so Edwin, now the the edition uh, Mo Ibrahim edition 2018, the choice was Rwanda. What does it mean for the continent? So two things. The reason why we're particularly here is that we'd like to showcase the things that Rwanda has won or that is winning. Mm. Number one is the fight against corruption. So you know the African Union this year, the theme is winning the fight against corruption, a sustainable part for Africa's transformation. Mm. That is the theme this year. Rwanda is a place where there is a policy of zero tolerance to corruption. Yes. This, is a, this is the time to showcase it. Yes. That's why we're here. We're trying yeah. to say, hey, look at Rwanda. It came from the ashes of war to now a beautiful place, right? The thing here is that there has been systems in place to say that if you are corrupt, you will be dealt with. And these are the things we want Africa to learn from, to say it is not just about mouth. There is good, there is real dividends. Mm. When you have, you have a corrupt free society, there is good dividend when you have people who are serious about governance, who are serious about their people, who mm. put their people first before themselves. And this is what we're trying to show in. That's why you see Rwanda is a good place, yes. you know, to showcase that. And that is why it is not surprising mm. that the, the weekend is happening here in Rwanda, mm. because there is a lot of good stories to tell here. Mm. You see, so progress has been made. And more importantly for us is that the African Union should learn mm. that when you say you want to fight corruption, it can be done. It has been done in Rwanda. Oh, okay. So now, uh, uh, when we're talking about... Uh, uh, accountability and ma management yes. uh, what should be the the harvest when there is mismanagement now let me tell you something it is important to know this when people look at Africa do you know they, about 60% of the population are young people yes these people have to work they have to eat where you don't find jobs for them when there is no employment there's a popular saying that the devil, the idle mind is the devil's workshop, right? Yes. They become available to do all kinds of evil. Yes. When you go to Northeast Nigeria and see what Boko Haram is doing. Yes. These are not old people that are fighting. Uh. They are young people that are fighting. These people who could have been employed, who could have been doing other things, but they are not available. They are available to do this, you know, uh, terrorist Mm. activities because there's nothing engaging them so when there is mismanagement mm. and people suffer and people are not employed there will be insecurity yes and insecurity means there will be no there will be no peace and when there is no peace there cannot be development so this is why it goes in a yeah, very cycle. terrible cycle yes you understand so yes. we have to make sure that we get the ma management of resources right mm. so that we can provide the opportunities mm. for those who are willing to work to get the job to do and then they can be more productive and we can have a prosperous society. So we can break that cycle by having the right, uh, you know, resource management. Yes. And one of the things we're proposing is that, look, if people know what you're doing in government, then they can trust you. Yes. They know, okay, we have this amount of billions of naira or dollars yes. that we have. This is all we have. Yes. And they know the government is applying this percentage to this, that percentage to this. And, and they, once they can see right then they trust the government yes. and once they trust the government i'm telling you institutions work yeah so but when you when there is the lack of transparency mm -hmm. then institutions are likely to be less trusted yes. and once institutions are not trusted you can bring it is bringing room for chaos yes. and so this is why we are promoting transparency 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 we say let the budget be transparent let your public procurement system be transparent yes. open up the space so that citizens can be part of it yes. and when they feel that they are part of it then they can trust you and then they can work with you they can cooperate with you to deliver democracy and deliver development mm -hmm. so these are the things we are pushing for yeah. the other thing again i would say is in terms of resource management is that there is a there is a um panel headed by Thabo Mbeki, the former president of South yes, Africa. Yes. It's called the Illicit Financial Flow um, Panel Report. The report stated that $50 billion leaves Africa every year. By $50 billion. Leave? Yeah, they leave. They're st through illicit uh, yeah, financial uh, oh. transactions. Uh, over 20 embezzlement? So about 20% of that is embezzlement and corruption. Yes. But a majority of it, can you believe, comes from commercial transactions. So when companies come to do business here, they take the money out. They, 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 put the, they don't pay the tax that they're supposed to pay. Yes. They shift their tax to another place. When they calculated all of the money that lived through those means, it's about $50 billion, billion dollars. dollars annually. 
So we need to start thinking as government to say, what can we do to prevent this? And so we've said many things. We said, look, first of all, you need to modify your tax laws so that we can be able to get the actual value that people are supposed to pay. Mm. When their company is working in Africa, they pay the revenue. Then we can cooperate with other tax jurisdictions. So when we exchange tax information, we will be able to see, hmm, this guy is making all the money here, but he's taking it out, right? Mm. Then you can correct that. Then we go on another further to say, let us even know the real owners of companies. Mm. So when any company is operating in Africa, we need to know who are the people that are funding that company. Mm. So that when they move or they get involved in any kind of shady deals, mm. we can identify the real people behind it. And then they can be brought to book, right? Mm. Those are the kind of reforms we are asking yes. African leaders to put in place so that we can have effective management of the limited resources that is available on the continent. Yes, yes, so that people don't just start moving them out mm. and then we continue to suffer the consequences here in Africa.